how to tell a dog's going to bite you way before he actually do bites you. But when I learned about aggression, and I'm still learning about aggression, it's the meatiest, most exciting topic in the dog world. It's the hardest, um, it's the most complex, and I don't think you're ever done learning it. Um, but when I started, I was given the sort of uh, the bite scale, which started with growl, snarl, and it went all the way up here. At the end of it was killing, like what Bain did with Diane Whipple. And then right before killing was a mauling. Right before mauling was a uh, four teeth where the dog thrashes you, not you're pulling away, but the dog is. And it trickled on down the line to, uh, you know, uh, incisor nip, uh, a snap where the teeth click, a snap where the teeth don't click. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens before growl, snarl that you can learn to teach your eye to see which is very helpful because um, there are many, many, many warning signs of aggression that will keep you safe. If you rely on growl, snarl, you'll get bitten a lot because the dog's pretty far along in the sequence. It's just before whatever happens next, which is usually a bite of some sort. I'm going to give you this stuff. There's four, th four items. I call it a biteometer, the bitometer. And uh, I'm going to give you uh, one, two, three, and four. And growl and snarl is five. For everything that I'm going to tell you, which is one through four, there are a thousand benign, benevolent reasons a dog could do that. And it's not always aggression. But it can be. And when you're working with dogs, it's always better to be like Columbo and to just notice everything, take notes, and you can read your notes later at the end of the day about each dog and go, oh, that, that did, you know. That didn't end up being important. He wasn't aggressive. But you need to make those no notes, and you need to say these things, and you need to train yourself to you know, have concrete observations. Um, but what's going to happen is you're going to walk out of here after today, and you look at every dog, and you're going to go, oh my god, that dog's going to bite. <laughs> every single dog. <laughs> and I'll tell you a couple of things. First of all, your pendulum will swing way to this side. Uh, your pendulum, for many of you, is probably somewhere in here, or for some of you, it's over here, and d most dogs are good until proven bad. Once you've been bitten, or scared, or seen somebody attacked, your pendulum swings over here, and you're like, no, all dogs are scary until proven good. <laughs> but your pendulum will be way out here. You'll be like, there are no, there's not a the benign dog out there. They're all going to kill you. But uh, that's how it is, and then it'll settle. What I'm hoping is that you will not have to be bitten personally, attacked, scared, or watch somebody do it to be able to have a healthy pendulum, which is um, a logical ability to unemotionally uh, view, view a dog and assess it. And the problem in our field is they're dogs, and we immediately form emotional attachments. Anyway, one, one of the, the truth of the matter is your pendulum will be here, far over, and you'll be like, God, those dogs, they all look like they're going to bite. That dog looks like it's going to bite. And on the one hand, what I will tell you is the world is filled with near misses. The world is filled with dogs who are much readier to bite um, than you have thought previously. Dogs rarely actually bite, but many of them think about it long and hard. Um, and the thing about a dog who actually does bite He'll do it maybe one out of 900 times, and 899 times. He's, on, he's there on the scale and the sequence. He's just not following through. But his intention is there, his uncomfort, his discomfort, his, it's all there. So you're going to see a lot, and you'll be like, no, no, this can't be. There's no good dogs left. Well, the truth of the matter is dog, there's a lot of dogs out there who are aggressive that hold it together. Ask anyone with an aggressive dog, and one of the reasons it's so hard to manage them is they're perfectly fine in so many situations. You sort of like, then you want to see, hey, will my dog be fine in this situation? You know? And, and because they're rarely not fine. I and mean, that's aggression. Um, okay. No signs of friendliness. And what is no signs of friendliness? It's not, does the dog look friendly? It has to act friendly in order for you to say it's friendly. And how do I mean by act friendly? 
What I mean is the dog must, on its own, initiate social contact with you. Okay, and that means if that dog doesn't come up to me and request some sort of social interaction, I will not pet the dog. If I don't feel safe, I, I, won't, I don't have to pet it. Let's talk about what is social contact. Here's one definition. Uh, it's gentle physical contact that lasts two seconds or longer. That means the dog that leaps up, pounces on you, expels air, and leaps off is not sociable. That was contact. It could be attention-seeking. It could be um, many things. It could be aggression in a, you know, in a not a terribly scary form. But it's not sociable. Sociable is the dog might jump on you, but not to expel air. It's not jump at you, on you. They might not be trained. They linger, and it's two seconds or longer. If they lean against you, they usually lean two seconds or longer. Leaning can also be, you know, dominance or whatever. But again, we don't know what it means, so we just write leaning. And it could be sociable, it could be dominance, but we notice it lasts for two seconds. But you're going to notice it two seconds or longer. Uh, and that's just something that is. There's sociable contact that will last less than two seconds. Um, and um, a dog who greets you by mouthing is, that's not soft contact. Now again, you might have a vishla at home who greets you at the door and he mouths your hand or the golden that takes you, that's fine. Again, for everything I'm telling you to, to watch out for, there are many reasons why a dog does it and you do not have to worry. But when a dog comes up and the first thing he does is he's got his mouth on you, um, that's not soft contact, that's not sociable. That would be like, um, I go into a, a store, let's say I want to buy a, bu a bunch of flowers. I go into a florist, and I, uh, I walk up to the clerk, and I'm punching her a little bit, kicking <laughs> at her. And I'm like, hey, I want to buy some flowers. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a little aggressive. It's just, you know, it's a little rough. <laughs> um, you know, you wouldn't do that. I would walk in with some distance. Okay. So will the dog initiate sociable contact on his own? So the dog initiating social contact. That's the dog approaching you. I don't want you to hold out your hand. Um, I don't want you to call the dog over. When, when we're learning about handling, this is not training. Um, you have no treats, you have no toys, you have yourself. You have all the, the good things a human has to offer a dog. And what pleasurable things does a human have to offer? Touch, voice, praise, smiling, some sort of attention, connection, um, and physical contact. That's the best we have to offer that's pleasant to a dog. And when a dog says, I don't need that or want that right now, and he says that by not approaching, he may not be aggressive at all. He may just be like, I'm just not into it right now. But when he's saying, I don't even want what you have to offer that's pleasurable, you know immediately that his threshold for tolerating something that's not pleasurable is low or, or not even existent, okay? And the dog is saying, I, right now I just don't feel like you're petting or you're smile, I don't, I don't need you right now. And the, the, that means if you do something to the dog that he doesn't like or doesn't want, and you don't know what that is till you do it. For every dog, that's different, right? Some dogs touch him on the top of the head, that's it. Some dogs touch him on the muzzle, that's it. Some dogs hold him by the collar, that's it. Some dogs look directly at him, that's it. Um, you don't know what it is that the dog might not want, but he will not tolerate it because he doesn't even want what's pleasurable. So he's not going to tolerate what's unpleasurable, right? That's how, that's how it works. Number two on the biteometer is the eyes. And here's what it is about the eyes. It's a dilated pupil. And of course, I now I've told you to look at pupils, so now you're going to be staring right at the dogs, <laughs> right? And if pupils dilated or not. Um, you can see if, dilated, if pupils are dilated without actually having to stare in his eyes. You're going to get good at, at doing it from the, an angle. And here's the thing about it, which you can see almost right away, is the, the pupils will be big, but it's not just that. The dog who is um, up on the biteometer, who is at higher risk of biting you than, than a very comfortable, benevolent dog, 
who will dilate his pupils and he will open up his eyeballs to get as much light in as possible. He's aroused, he wants to be ready for fight or flight. And he opens up and takes in as much light as possible and you'll see it reflect out and it'll look like a marble. Like, you know, marbles have the cloudy swirl in it. Now, it could have cataracts because he's old and then you'll be like, oh my God, you know? But <laughs> usually it's just the marbling. Um, and you'll see that and the eye is big. And you almost always will see a, a, what we call a hard eye with a dilated pupil. And what is a hard eye? It's not just um, a mean expression. Dogs can have mean expressions and they, they mean their mean expressions. They have expressions just like we do. Hard, uh, the dilated pupil comes with a hard eye and a hard eye is open and the eyeball is usually pretty round and pretty forward, okay? It's the same in people. And when you smile, you know, everything softens and your eye squints a little bit. <clears throat> you squint, get softer. Usually the, the pupil constricts it, it just a little bit. Um, and so along with the dilated pupil, the marbling effect is a wide eye and it's open. And that's what's called hard eye. Hard eye doesn't well, actually, I don't know if that's official, but here, <laughs> that's what it, it means. It doesn't mean the dog's hard or mean. It means right for that moment, he's giving a hard eye, not a soft eye. Soft eye is sociable. A hard eye is not. Um, and again, don't be frightened. You pull out a treat for a dog who's really treat motivated, and you'll get hard eye. Pupils dilated. You know, they're like... Um, Depending on what side I used to work, I had my Doberman, and if I worked her in heel position or on the right side, the, the eyeball closest to me would dilate, and the other one would be all right. You know, just <laughs> a lot of food drive. And then she wasn't aggressive around food or anything, but it arouses them. Number three and number four are very close together. Um, and then they sort of happen simultaneously. And by the time they happen simultaneously, you're in a lot of trouble and you know it. And again, number three is you'll start to see the whites of the, the dog's eyes. And you'll start to see it frequently, which is a non-scientific number. What is frequently? I'm going to define it for you today without a number, and this works. Um, frequently is, Sue tells you to start looking for the whites of the eyes. You will look at a dog and all of a sudden you see the whites of his eyes and you go, ah, yeah, that's what Sue said to look at. Frequently means you can immediately start counting them. You're like, oh, there's another, and there, and there, and there. That's frequently. Infrequently, or where it's not a big concern, the dog may not be showing you the whites of his eye because he's very ready to, to bite. Infrequently means you see it once, and then by the time you see another whites of the eyes, you have to, you were distracted and, and, and it's an interruption, and, you, and uh, you have to go, oh yeah, I remember now, I was looking at the whites of the eyes. Because that means that he didn't show it often enough for you to keep with the whites of the eyes. Why is it? Why do they show the whites of the eyes? I have no idea. I have no idea, but I have, um, I have a theory, and here's my theory. You have a dog who's showing the whites of his eyes. We know he's closer to aggression than other friendly dogs and other relaxed dogs. So he's uncomfortable for whatever reason. And um, here it is in slow motion. Here's that dog. He's looking this way to start with. His, he wants to look that way, slow-mo, okay? So the dog that's uncomfortable wants to turn that way, but will linger his eyes just ever so long over here because he doesn't trust you so much either. So by the time he moves, you've seen the whites of his eyes. Whereas a relaxed dog just looks and everybody goes together. Because the dog's like, I need to be in two places at once. That's my theory. Right after whites of the eyes, you'll start noticing that the dog will freeze. And I'm not talking about the big freeze. I'm talking about before the dog gives big freezes, he will give lots of little, tiny freezes. 
it, this is hard to train your eye to see. You'll see a dog here, and maybe you're petting it, and it freezes like that. You know, did you see the freeze? Just, so here you are, petting the dog, I'm the dog. Freezes like that. That was a freeze. It doesn't last long. It's a pause, a tiny, tiny pause, a, a moment in time where the dog briefly freezes. And uh, what, um, it's a tiny freeze, and it's the dog's way of saying, stop petting me there, um, or um, that's enough now. It's very, very minor, very, very mild, but he is saying it. And you do it as an, as an animal. You're doing it in response to the dog. And don't think of it as a power play. It's not like, oh, well, that dog's winning. She can't let that dog win. That kind of thing happens all the time. It's what keeps us safe. I want you to be aware of it, though. Um, and you'll see so many people with, um, with a dog that's kind of scary or aggressive, and they're petting it, and the dog will just pause ever so slightly, and they'll just pet it somewhere else, and they'll never get aggression from the dog. But the dog is fairly aggressive. And it's, um, it's, it's those moments. So it's changing the subject, and they happen with tiny little freezes. This is the hardest thing to train your eye to see, but you will. You'll be able to do it. When the freeze and the whites of the eye come together, you know you're really being warned. I, I did a, um, I think, I don't know where I was. I was somewhere in the Midwest, and I was working, um, dogs, and there was a big black, like, Chalakita mix from the shelter, a big female that looked like a male, huge adult dog, completely, you know, stoic and non-emotional, and I've just got her on the leash, and she's standing facing away, and you know, her tail's up, she's standing facing away, wants nothing to do with me, and I reached to stroke her once along her back, okay, and I stroked her, and she did this. and I wasn't going to stroke her again, right? And that was a freeze in the whites of the eye. Now, she just told me where on my body she would direct the bite if she were to bite, and where? Face. Face. They will always tell you where they're going to bite you, which is great, because you don't want to risk your face as much as you can risk your hands or your legs. Um, but they'll always tell you where. How do they tell you? They'll stare at that spot. They'll greet you in that area. Um, and it doesn't mean just because you have a dog that greets you and kisses you in the face that he's going to bite your face. It just means if he ever happens to get to the point in his life where he's really angry at you and he's going to do something about it, in all likelihood, he'll direct the um, display or the aggression. He'll direct it at your face. And what's really important is to understand the physical space between you and the dog. A lot of you will do it naturally. Boo the dog. He'll just turn around and, you know, your blood drains and he looks at you and you'll just go like that. All right? I moved, I don't know, was that a quarter of an inch or so or maybe an inch, right? And all I did was that in slow motion. That, you know, that's enough to stop the bite. Um, they will sometimes uh, bop you or tap you or nudge you with their nose. Um, and uh, they'll do it and sometimes they'll just do it once and they'll say, you do that again with me, I'm going to bite you in the breast. Or um, come around, a little muzzle punch. Um, but they'll always tell you where. I, I was doing a dog, I was in Ohio, it was a little miniature shepherd mix, you know, like looks like a shepherd but is way too tiny, probably has no shepherd in her. Returned for snapping and biting. A um, little dog, very, very high strong, looks very happy, a little nervous. And... Uh, I don't remember what I was doing, but I'm petting her, and the dog, and it happened like that. With her, um, just with her nose, she went, she tapped me there, she tapped me there, and she tapped me there. And I couldn't even get out the words. I said, she's going to bite me, and when she does, it'll be on the hands. I went to look at her teeth again, and then she air snapped three times. She went, snap, 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 and she went back and forth. Did exactly what she just told me she would do. It happened very quickly. They will mouth the area that they're planning to bite. Um, sometimes they'll warn you, they'll, like if you're petting them and they're like, hey, get your hands off of me. They'll stare at your hands and then if you still pet them, then they'll turn around and look at your face and they'll say, look, I'd bite you on your hands if you could get the idea here, but you're not getting the idea. I'm going to have to go for your face. <clears throat> okay. 
at uh, one through four. Um, again, uh, there are two things that will make any dog who's showing any of those behaviors more dangerous, potentially dangerous. And one of them is the age of the dog. The older he is, if he's going to bite, he's capable of doing a lot of damage, and more damage than a young dog. Usually, the older a dog is, the more experience he's had biting. It's a more professional bite. It often has a lot less uh, warning. And so, any sign that you see there, and it's an adult dog, particularly an intact, sexually, male or female, you're more at risk. The second thing is, is the dog aroused? Is he in a state of high arousal, very stimulated? And if he is, um, his thresholds for all his aggression is way down. And so the aroused dog, um, the aroused dog takes the whole biteometer and moves it up a notch into more of a dangerous thing. And what does a dog look like when he's aroused? He's usually moving. Uh, his tail's usually going. Um, his eyes are big, his brow's usually furrowed, and he's often panting, but he's very up. That sort of arousal. I talk about like Kramer's aroused, Jerry Seinfeld is not. Right? <laughs> <laughs> The other thing that I want you to look at today is tail carriage. And what I want you to look at is, I mean, there's three positions to notice. There's, and this goes for a pug, to a, a Siberian Husky, to a Whippet. Doesn't matter. Every dog, except uh, English and French Bulldogs and Bostons, who sometimes can't move your tails um, up or down, um, or in the direction that they want to. Almost every other breed, any, anyone without a corkscrew tail, you can do this. There's high, which is above the plane of the dog's back. There's level, which is along the plane of the dog's back. And low, which is lower than the plane of the dog's back. What you want to notice is that if you're interacting with the dog during social interaction, whether it's restraint control, dominance, making the dog do something he doesn't want to do, or sociable interaction, you're petting, you're playing with, the dog's tail should be lower than when he's sort of aroused and looking around. A dog's tail should lower in deference to a human when interacting with a human. So if it starts out, and, and you'll see pugs can do it, chows, I mean, they can move their tails, and they will. And sometimes if the, the tail's, like, uh, let's say a Norwegian Elkan that's maybe really double curled, it's just a matter of relaxing it a little bit, but you'll get the idea. You can very easily see it in docked tails. Um, very short tails, you can still see it. Um, in general, you're safer with a dog with a level or a low tail. I'm not talking about tucked and frozen, but a dog who's giving a low wag or a level wag, um, I believe you're safer with that dog, and that the higher the tail, I believe the more dominant. And while dominance in itself isn't bad, you never know where the dog crosses from dominance to dominance aggression. <laughs> is he? He's been touching me with his mouth, his teeth without, not just, he kind of nudges me with an open mouth so I get the incisors. Every time he touches me, it's extremely physical. Um, it's been directed at my chest very deliberately and forcefully. Very pushy. He wants all of my space, hasn't he? Into me and in and into me. Um, very aroused, dilated pupils, okay? Furled brow. Now, um, that was the first warning. That was my hand. And he shoved it away, and he poked it, and he said, get off of me. Um, and uh, that was his first warning. Now, 
Um, leave me another warning. Yeah. Leave me another warning. And again, he's so aroused, he's going to mount me, right? I mean, he's just, he can't, he's right on that lo line. That was, a, that was an absolute brutal uh, um, body. Those are, those are, he's biting without using his mouth and his teeth. Those are acts of aggression. This is the kind of dog that tends to look really happy, playful, and just needs training. And this is a, a serious dog. He's got fear, and he's got dominance. Can you see the different reaction? He's a little worried. He's done so many pounce forwards. Like, there's the air sniff, right? Air sniff and go forward. Air sniff back off. Um, and then he parries forward as well. This is a very unsafe dog. He's very conflicted, right? Um, there's a part of him that's a little fearful and needy, and there's a part of him that's extremely aggressive. Um, he's, and he, uh, you called it outrageous, sort of peaks and valleys. It's that he spikes. It's that, it's that part of arousal. It's like when Kramer comes into a room, he slides in and skids, right? And doesn't just walk in. Um, the, the, there's a really unsafe quality to handling him. Um, and I would like those of you who want, um, I'm going to give you a le the leash and I want you to hang out with him. Just come take the leash. Hang on, two secs. Um, and what I'll do, the first thing is that you don't want to correct a dog like this. His cup is full. And, um, you know, he jumps up as a trainer sometimes, um, or even just a dog person. We get annoyed when we say no or off or get down. Don't do that with this dog. He's ready to. Uh, detonate. Um, so don't do that. You let him do it. You can just sort of gently br brush him off. Um, when you hold the leash, I gather as much into my hand as possible. And to stay upright, you spread out your feet so that they're slightly wider than your hips. Um, you don't want to face the dog with even feet. What you want to do is spread them out so that I don't, never did ballet, which is very obvious, but they're a little bit so that one foot's going one way so that you have balance. And what you want to do is maintain a constant tension so that you know where he is so he doesn't continually launch. And you want to hold fairly close to his center of gravity, not so close that he's going to bite you on the wrist. And there, see, see how he's, he warns you that he's going to do that. Um, and not so far away that you're not in control. And that's where you want to do it. Good. And you stay with him and get a feel for him. And how much more aroused just sw switching hands, right? He's close. And there, uh, hang on, there was uh, this uh, dog trainer instinct. She just moved away from the wall. Because what was he going to do? He was going to urine mark. It was the way he was sniffing, um, curling back, so urine mark. So she just moved out of the way, um, which is great. The word of it didn't happen. But unless you point it out, you wouldn't have realized it happened. Stroke him once. Now, different with her. That was a freeze. Um, and he's, that was a distinct freeze, and he tries to get away. Was there bonding with me, though? Yeah. No. He needed me but I, because I was there. He's looking me in the eye, and what I did is I looked away, and I put my hand here. And the hand breaks the eye contact. I, I, I'm not doing this because I'm like, when that happens, you put your hand there. That's just what happens. So I'm telling you what. It breaks the contact, and then it says, if you're going to bite me, this is what's in your way. You won't get to my face today. Um, OK, hand the leash to you, Mary Jane. Great. Great. Now, uh, again, about to mount her. So if he does this, great, because then I'll show you what to do if you're mounted. Um, and doesn't it look like he might urine mark her? Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's sort of a different response. But what was different between Danielle and Mary Jane? Did he know her? No. I made her pet him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stroke him once. There's the freeze. Right? And stop. And stand up. He does. He just freezes dead. And that's the thing he's afraid of. Right. Yeah. And the cessation of panting. Okay, but he came back to her. And the cessation of panting. Your facial expressions were different than hers. Um, and again, you, it doesn't matter if he picks up fear on you, if you smell like you're afraid, or you're at 
don't even worry about that. Don't worry about that in life. You'll feel afraid, and you will, and you'll do certain things. Don't, don't worry if you're tense or you pull back on the leash. You're not causing dogs to do this. You are responding to them. You're reading, the, you're reading them internally. He's stepping on my foot and pressing against me. On your foot and pressing. So that goes, you know, too. He wants to know where you are, but he wants me. Very, very interesting dog. Very careful eye. Lots of whites. Very careful eye. Interesting. He keeps um, looking up at the leash and looking up at the leash and, and looking at the leash and almost touching it. And so I ask, why would a dog do that? There are many reasons. You don't have to be right. There are many reasons, and we don't know the right answer. Why would a dog pop the leash, touch it? It's something that's controlling. He's noticing it, right? Uh huh. He said um, he's noticing the the thing that's uh, restraining him. Um, and I don't know why he would do that, what his intentions are, except that I find it interesting that he's constantly noticing it. If he were really so more sociable, I know I'm saying that, but he's sitting right here cuddling. Uh, but there's lots of freezes. Do you, do you see them? I, I'm getting them from here. I'm getting them from here, and I'm kneeling down, which is not safe, and I'm keeping this hand right here. <coughs> um, and again, from this angle, I get lots of, oh, really ho mean. I know that's a, a judgment, but he's like, Right, the whole time, very hard look, but a very cutie. I mean, that's the emotional part of it. Mm -hmm. And he's beautiful, right? There's something jewel-like. Like the tea exam that I did wasn't part, wasn't part of the temperament test. Now that leaning into, is that because he's enjoying the affection you feel? Um, why is he leaning into me? I don't know. There could be many reasons. A, he's enjoying it. There does seem to be part of him right now that really likes the physical contact. Um, it certainly is up to him. And now, do you see like white to the eyes? And he's like, okay, get this leash off of me. We're done now, right? And he, yeah, he's decided, he's, he's decided everything. <laughs> Come here, good boy, good boy. And th those little warnings, they're right there in your hand. And then you have to watch it. Good boy, good boy. Good. 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 Okay. This dog has had by far the most um, pulling on leash, the most power. And I don't. I I used to think pulling on leash was dogs trained. He's not trained his own physical strength. But I see. Um, I see correlation between dominance and dogs who really pull hard on leash. Uh, the question was, was that already a freeze, right when I just stroked her? And that got rid of me. But my animal said, get out of there. And she turned to face me, and she touched me here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, and again, incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this. Oh, and that's absolutely. Mm -hmm. She had to then. Did you see? She has to escalate. Turn around and look right at my face. Yes. And ooh, her pupils blew on that. Whoo! That was a scary one. Um, And now blood has drained. Uh -huh. she, she crossed the line. Dog has scared me. Really scared me. So yeah, and now she wants out, right? Um, really interesting dog. This is the dog so far is much closer to biting than anybody else right now here today. Uh, much closer to biting. <laughs> And she's freezing. Mm -hmm. she, she really holds. <laughs>
Now there was a similar sort of freeze calming thing, I thought, that the other red dog did, but I think with a very different intent. And where's her tail in greeting? Uh-huh. If she came in, it was high. And she's actually even smiling. She went, and, and that's not snarling. That was a. Yeah, sorry, too. Oh, she's. <laughs> Wish I had a brush. And again, those are phrases. How can you tell if they're aggressive or want more? She turns. Come back for more. Um, she initiated sociability in immediately. Right, I mean, before I even had a chance. To, been, uh, it's all nudging, it, gentle nudging. It's all little uh, licks, not excessive licking. The jumping up is very um, contoured. I call it, the word is blobular. They, they blob into you. Um, blobular. Um, highly social. And again, she does the freeze when you pet her. And so the question is, first of all, she, yeah, she's squinting and she's leaning in. And second of all, she requests more. I want you to develop your gut again today. Again, like everything I just told you, all I've done is broken down what the dog is doing to make you feel the way you do about a dog. And many dog people, they'll, they'll, their bodies tell them before they tell themselves. You ask a really good trainer and they'll be like, oh, I always know the hair will go up on the back of my neck. They'll say, you can't make the hair go up on the back of your neck, but it will go up. Or what happens to me is I can feel the blood rush down, drain, and then I'm like, wow, why am I feeling that way, you know, with the dog? And all I've done just for you there is I've given you the physical reasons the dog gives you that makes you feel that way. I'm not, uh, not, not making it up. But it's absolute, it's fact, it's what dogs do.